um, I guess I'll share my screen. Um, so yeah, I don't really know where to start. I'll just start with the debug pages. Um, so basically, if you look at the last blocks, so the, the, this is a this is a mainnet node that we run. Um, and by the way, there's a there, there, there's a new debug pages that are in development, and it's not it's not yet deployed in a public place, but it can be run locally. So I'll I'll use that. Um, it doesn't have all of the information. It has like some of the pages, but um, anyway. So um, so this is the most recent block of the blockchain and um as we can see right now the chain is just a it's just a linear chain uh like in in weird cases there could be forks um but uh currently there isn't any forks because the chain is just going very well um so the whenever we have um, a new block that is being produced, and we would just add it on top of the chain with one more height. Um, and sometimes, like if there, if 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 the, if a block is skipped for whatever reason, then um, the next block would um, be of a higher height. So, so like if, every time we produce a block, it will, it will always be a higher height. So let's say. Um, yeah, when this page this, this page refreshes sometimes and then it messes up the those drawings. Um, so let's say this like let's say this is n, um, and then um, let's see if I can do a whiteboard maybe uh, whiteboard whiteboard. Uh, okay. So if we have like a block n, and then so in a normal case it would be there's a block height n plus one. Um, but if something wrong happens, then someone else is going to produce another block n plus two based on the previous parent. And that would create a fork. Um, so, so let's talk about how that works. Um, so every every height, there is a block producer. So say for height n, the block the the block producer, um, the block producer is this validator a. Um, it 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 knows it is the block producer based on some criteria that we'll talk about later but but it it looks at it looks at the current epoch and then the epoch decides who should produce each height um there's a map from height to producer and it's deterministic everybody can compute that so everybody knows who should be the block producer for block n or any block um so the block producer produces the block, and then it sends the block to everyone. Um, and then when you have, um, can I make a new page here? Oh, yeah, I, I could. OK. So the, uh, the block producer A produces the block, and then it sends it to all of the other validators. Um, and then all these validators will look at that block. So it, it sends the block n to everyone. And then everyone will look at that block and verify that the block is good. Um, so that means like it is validly formatted. It has valid chunks, and um, it it will like each validator will simulate the chunks they're able to simulate, 
and make sure that these tr these transactions and receipts make sense um, and everything is agreeable and then uh, i have a question so yeah. is the like you said the validators will uh, verify the chunks and simulate the chunks so is this the same thing as sending approvals or it's different so I'll yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say right oh, okay. now, right now. Um so as soon as they verify that they're valid, they will send an approval for the block. And um they they will send the approval to the next block producer. So instead of back to A, they will send the approval to B. So let's say this is B. And then they will all send it to B. So this is the approval. So when you have an approval, it has two parameters. Um, see, does it have two parameters? Maybe it's just one. Doesn't matter. So we just basically say um, approve this block. Um, and we tell B that it is allowed now to produce block N plus one. Um, so then block producer B will produce N plus one. Um, and then it does the similar thing. So let's say, um, let me just, uh, oh, I can't copy this. Okay, that's okay. Um, so let's say this is B, and um, it produces a block, um, and that's n plus one. Oh, and by the way, B only starts producing this block if it receives more than two thirds approval. Um, otherwise, it it just doesn't have enough votes. So let's say B produces n plus one. But something wrong happens. Like either B is a malicious validator, or um, like the network just isn't good enough that like the block just doesn't get heard by all of the validators, or there, there, there's some like there, something goes wrong. Uh, there, there could be a bunch of things that goes wrong, but um, typically it's either there's network issues, or B just wasn't able to produce a block um for some reason and we can talk about why exactly later um and then the next block producer doesn't produce uh, um, doesn't get enough votes so let's say the next one is c who is supposed to produce n plus two um and c only gets this uh, less than two thirds of approval. Um, then C cannot produce a block. Um, so what happens is um, sorry, this is this is um this. Is, it's actually, uh, uh, this is actually not not the case I wanted to talk about. So let's let's just say B. Um, let let's just say B did not have the chance to produce a valid block. So so let's just say B didn't didn't produce a block because if he produced a block, it, it would um it would not be this case. Um, so so B did not produce a block, and then all these validators, they they're wondering where that block is. Um, and they don't see it. So after a timeout of about six seconds, I think, um, maybe less than that, um, after a timeout, they would realize that this block is not there. And then they will send a approval to see, but this approval is not the same approval as the previous case. It would, they will send a skip. Um, and it will say skip from height n to n plus 2. 
Um, so previously, this approval was actually called an, indoor, an endorsement. I, I just kind of said approval because it's what we kind of just normally say. Um, an endorsement means that the block is valid. Skip means uh, we, we didn't see that block or the block is not valid. Um, so then when C sees that, uh, when C sees uh, two thirds of skip messages like this, um, C is going to produce a new block based on this, the, the base block that people have voted for in their skip messages. Um, and then there's going to be a fork. And basically, when there's a fork, like um, uh, generally, we would take the the highest height as the canonical chain, and then um, base off further pr productions from there. Generally, like hand wavy. Um, so that's so that's that part uh, about forks and. Uh, question? Production. Question? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you uh, because in the drawing you mentioned that uh, mm -hmm. let's assume that B did not produce the block. But so if if B did not uh, manage to produce the block, then there shouldn't be a fork, right? Because like yeah, that's right. So yeah, so 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 I think typical the more typical case is that um, there isn't a fork. It's just that there is a skip. Uh okay. Uh yeah. Yeah. Another, another question I have is let's say uh for example I'm a validator but uh like I failed to uh receive a I uh, receive uh, the block at n uh but mm -hmm. like most other validators they did receive n and they did send uh, the approval. So mm -hmm. what will happen to me the validator who didn't receive n? Would I like would I would I be able to continue adding like uh, the block at n minus two to my chain, or it, am I just missing out on all future like blocks forever? Yeah. So let's see. Um. So that that was the case that I was talking about earlier, but then I I I, I erased. Um, no. So 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 yeah. Let's say like um there is this block n, mm. and then you are supposed to produce n plus one. Um, and you heard some approvals for n, but you didn't hear all of them. Mm. Like you didn't hear enough of them, right? Yeah. Then you wouldn't be able to produce n plus one. Ah, oh, I see. But if I'm just a validator, I'm not a I'm not a block. I'm not assigned as block producer for n or n minus one, or mm. for n or n, n plus one or n, n plus two. I just didn't receive the block for n. Like, what's the effect for that? For example, some something happened with my network. I didn't receive the block at n, uh, and but but I like would like would I be able to continue receiving blocks for uh, like n, n plus one and n plus two, or am I just stopped there forever? Uh, yeah, you would still receive things. Um, mm. Like so, yeah. Like say you didn't receive n, right? And then mm. um, n plus one gets produced. Um, mm. You would still get n plus one mm. uh, and and then there's a problem um because you don't have block n right yeah yeah um but the the the, the protocol that is not super related to validator um like the the more basic part part of the protocol says that if you receive what is called an orphan block so a mm. block with parent you don't know mm. it will automatically go fetch the parent oh okay so so pretty soon you will have n, and then you will be able to validate n plus one. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and then back to the case where uh, if you if you didn't if you didn't hear of n, um, and like you are at here, mm. um, you just didn't hear of n, mm. um, and then you didn't send the vote, right? Mm, yeah. Let's say enough people didn't send the vote. Mm. And block producer n plus one, or the, the block producer for n plus one doesn't have enough votes, and so it cannot produce a block. Mm. Um, and then, so 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 then, it looks like um, let me just erase this. Um, 
it looks like some validators are on n minus one, and some validators are on n. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um. And so then let's think about what happens next. Um. So I think so n plus one definitely gets skipped because it just ne was never produced. Yeah. Um, so then after some time, every validator would try to send a skip for mm. n plus two. Mm. Um, and these validators, the, these validators that have n minus one would try to send a skip from n minus one to n plus two. Mm. And these validators who have n would try to send a skip from n to n plus two. Mm. Uh, so the so today do do validators send basically if they are at a, a at a height they would send approval or skip for any for all the heights that's like greater than it or it's just just sending like plus one because it because at, like what you all said, the heights is greater than it, yeah oh okay hmm. yeah um. Yeah, this is this is where my knowledge kind of gets a little fuzzy. I'm not exactly sure. Mm. Yeah, I think I think our documentation was like a little bit vague. Like it says, like send uh, approvals to like consecutive, like heights, <laughs> but they didn't yeah. say how many. Like you know, afterwards. But yeah, it's fine. Thank you. It, it will it will keep sending. Oh, uh, it will never yeah. stop. Oh, okay. I do this. I see. Um. But the hope is that, like, at some point, somebody would have enough of these skip votes, so that they can re they can resume and start so they can producing. Produce them. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, I I think in this case, I I I think you're able to combine skips that are not based on the same height. Mm. I'm not exactly sure. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that should be OK. Yeah, I've, I have to check that. But um, we can we can see where that logic roughly is. Mm. Um, so let's see, maybe um, we could search for endorsement. Mm. Doomslog. Doomslog would sound like the thing that is responsible for doing that. So Doomslog is the, the uh, our consensus algorithm mm. so let's see um consensus collect block approval um this is a helper function that just finds all of the approvals for a block. Mm. Um, skip parent height, parent hash. Yeah, I, I, I think this is probably too much detail for now. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I don't want to um, take, take too much time here. Yeah. Um, so I think we should also talk about uh, how we select uh, block producers. So in this epoch info page, um, we can see that basically every uh, number of blocks, we will have a new epoch. Um, on mainnet, it looks like this is typically like 14 hours. Um, and uh, this is this is like this is configured as the number of blocks that um, that are supposed to be within an epoch. Um, it, it doesn't mean that exactly this epoch would be that many blocks. Um, it, it is more like we need to have at least this many blocks, but the epoch has to end on a certain kind of block. Um, like I think, I think it has to be like a final block. So final block means that. Um, so in in this kind of normal case um a final block would be this n minus two block um so so it's defined as a block that has two 
more blocks on top of it that has consecutive heights. So if you have a block n and then a block n plus 1 and n plus 2 on top of it, then that's a final block. Like um, n is a final block, not the n plus 2. Um, and basically, once we have a final block, then uh, unless something really, really bad happens, then this final block is always in the canonical chain. So, so like we know that a fork cannot kind of bypass the final block. Yeah. A question. So I I see many many where in our discussions uh, that says something called accepted is is a block being accepted the same thing as being final? Uh, I think. I would have to ask you what the context there is. Um, yeah, like I think it's yeah. Okay, we can. I I I can ask this question later. Mm, okay. Yeah. Because I I don't think that's a standard term. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay, so back to the um, back to these epochs. Um, the epoch ID is actually just the the last block of the previous previous epoch. Um, so we just use the that block ID as the epoch ID. Um, so if, if we then look at the validators, um, so each block we elect the block producers and the chunk producers uh, for that epoch. And then this stays the same for the epoch. Um, so we see here that um, in the current epoch, um, this validator here has so far been expected to produce 3,255 blocks, and it has produced all of them. Um, and it has also been expected to produce this many, um, or it has produced this many chunks, but missed this many chunks. So, so like, whenever, like we said earlier, the validator is supposed to produce a certain height, but it couldn't, then it would be missing that block. Um, and then for chunks, it's similar, but the, the chunk is for um, like a single shard in the block. Um, but chunks don't use this kind of um, approval logic. Chunk just means if you have the parent block and you're supposed to produce this chunk, you can produce the chunk. Um, so I'll talk about how, how the block and chunk produ uh, pr production work um, right after this. But I just want to um, talk about like the, the election. So, so each producer has, sorry, e e each validator has a bunch of stake. That's the, just the amount of near that it has staked. Um, and, and then we, we basically just rank the stake um, and take the top certain number of validators, I think it's 100, and make them block producers. So, so you see here, like B, BP means block producer. Um, everything above here would be a block producer. And then everything below here, we select some more validators to be chunk only producers. So they are only allowed to produce chunks, allowed and expected to produce chunks, but not blocks. Um, and we do this. It, it, um, we do this election like every epoch. Um, and uh, if a validator doesn't do what it's supposed to do, um, they can get kicked out. So like this this validator, for example, they were supposed to produce 27 chunks, but they produced zero. Um, so they were basically kicked out, and they're no longer a chunk producer. You can see they were previously chunk producers for the previous two epochs, but now they are not. Um, OK, so um, yeah, a question. So mm -hmm. uh, what does the, the column shards mean? Like, I thought all validators should track all, th all shards. Yeah, so uh, right now we are running in this uh, phase one um, of sharding, which means that even though each validator is assigned a shard, it still uh, it still tracks all shards. 
Um, but, but, um, but tracking doesn't mean that it, it, it is assigned all shards. Um, so say this, this validator here is assigned shard zero for this epoch. Um, but um, yeah, so so, so 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 it tracks all shards, but it's only assigned shard zero, which means that the chunk, that the chunks it produces are only for shard zero. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So, oh, does that mean for this block there will be some other validator that are producing the chunks on other shards? Yes. Oh. Okay. Um, so let's talk about chunk and block production then. That's going to be relevant. And, and by the way, these shards may change uh, from epoch to epoch. So um, I think we we can find yeah, like here, zero would be the next shard that attracts, but three is the current shard. Um, so you could switch shards like that. In phase two of sharding, not only would they only produce chunk for that shard, they would they will only track chunk uh, track that shard. So it it won't have stay for any of the other shards. OK, um, so let's go back to this. So the way chunk production and block produ production works is, um, so for every height, um, there will be a chunk producer for every shard. So Let's say this is shard zero, this is shard one, shard two, and shard three. And these are the chunk producers. So they could be block producers who also are chunk producers, or they could be chunk only producers. Um, but the 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 role of being block producer is independent from the role of being a chunk producer. Um, so just because you're producing block for that height doesn't mean anything about whether you're producing chunk for that height. Um, so there are four validators producing uh, the chunks for each height. And then there is the block producer for that height. So this is all for, for a specific height n. Um, so the chunk producers, they will each produce a chunk. And the chunk includes the transactions, the receipts, and uh, some metadata like the previous block. Um, and so they will send the chunk that they produce to the block producer that is designated for this height. And then the block producer will produce a block that contains each of these chunks. So, so they take these four chunks as input and um, output this block that con contains these chunks. Um, yeah. So and, what happens if if some chunks are missing? Let's say the shard three chunk is missing. Is yeah. this block production going to go through? Yeah, it will just be missing that chunk, which is allowed. Oh, I see. So, so that's why we we can see um, a bunch of chunks missing, but most of the blocks are not missing. Um, so when they produce chunks, they they uh like the these chunks are not being voted on. It's only the block that is being voted on. Um, and so, so there needs to be some kind of security assurance on the chunks, um, because uh, the, the 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 block actually contains only the chunk headers, um, and the chunk itself is like bigger. So when 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 validators vote on the block, they they don't necessarily need to download all of the chunk contents. Um, they they only need to download some things, and 
and this is for scalability because if you have like a thousand shards then each block would have a thousand chunks and you wouldn't want to download the body of every chunk so that would be very expensive you also don't want to validate the body of every chunk so then only validators who track that shard would download that specific chunk and then check the contents of that um, but that also means um, if you don't track the contents of a chunk, you still need to kind of contribute to the security of that chunk, because otherwise um, only the validators who track that shard would be able to vote for that chunk. Um, I'm, I'm being pretty hand wavy here, but, the, but, but there's, this, there's this additional mechanism where um, a chunk producer, when it makes a chunk, uh, when it makes a chunk, it will slice the chunk into a bunch of parts. Um, and it will give each validator, or each block producer, actually, um, some part of that chunk. So I need to draw this, like, split this into parts. Um, and then the, these parts are, um, are, are read Solomon encoded. So that, like, if you have, um, if you have, I think, like, a third of the chunks, uh, I mean, a third of the parts, you would be able to cons reconstruct the whole chunk. Um, so, so we di distribute these parts to each of the validators, and then um, when the validators vote for the block. Um, they check that they have the part that they're supposed to have for every chunk. So, so, so that basically means like, say you are this validator here, then, um, and and you track shard zero. Um, so you are this validator here. Um, you track shard zero, then that means you need to download the entire chunk zero. That's the the chunk zero's body, um, and then validate um, the chunk content. So that means like executing the transactions, the receipts. Um, then for the other shards. The other chunks, um, make sure you have the part um, that you own for that chunk. So for, for chunk one, two, and three, you need to have your corresponding part of that chunk. Um, and then when, when both are, um, are successful, then you endorse the block. Um, so, so that's it's just kind of it adds a bit of security um, to the chunk uh, to the chunks because we're only voting on blocks. Any questions here? <laughs> this is kind of confusing. Yeah, I have a question. So uh, basically, you like uh, every validator should track uh, currently should track one shard, and then for the other three. Three shards. They should, they should have received three parts, and then uh, mm -hmm. they should check that. So that let's say they they didn't receive one of the parts. Like let that let's say they download their chunk for their shard, and then they mm -hmm. had two other parts. Will that create a problem for them to endorse the block? Yeah, if they're missing a part that they're supposed to own, mm. and they should not vote on the block. Okay. 
Got it. So what would happen? Uh, so so the scenario that we're trying to prevent here is that a chunk producer produces the chunk, it distributes the chunk headers, um, but then doesn't actually distribute the chunk's content, or the chunk content might just be malicious, um, but it doesn't distribute the chunk body. So nobody has the chunk body. Nobody is able to validate the chunk body, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have these validators, 25% uh, of which can actually track your chart. Mm -hmm. These 25% are going to basically not approve your block, but the remaining 75% will, because they don't know anything about your chunk. Mm -hmm. And then based on the 75% of vote, the block exceeds two-thirds approval, so then it just keeps going. But the chunk is invalid. Um, and so, so that's why everybody needs to kind of have a part of every chunk so that if we do get enough votes, then that means we have at least two-thirds of the parts, which means that collectively we're able to reconstruct every chunk if we wanted to. And to be able to reconstruct every chunk is important so that if we need to prove that, that a particular chunk producer was lying about that chunk, um, we need to have the data to prove that. So, so in this case, like if, if the chunk pr producer produced a malicious chunk but only distributes the header, then people will not have the parts and they will not vote on the block. If they if 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 the chunk producer produces an in, invalid uh, a, a, a malicious chunk and distributed the chunk entirely, then the validators would be able to reconstruct that chunk and um, and we would be, they would be able to prove that the chunk is indeed in, invalid. Do, do, do validators send anything if they find a chunk is invalid? Or they just yeah. don't vote? They they actually do. They send a thing called challenge. Um, but that's not a thing that only validators can send. Anybody can send a challenge. A challenge is basically a proof that uh, somebody produ produced something invalid. So in this case, if you want to send a challenge that a chunk is invalid, you will need to include the chunks uh, either the chunk header or the chunk body, like something about the chunk that is invalid, and then attach a proof why the, why it's invalid. Got it. Um, so like, for example, let's say the, the chunk producer produces a malicious chunk that, 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 that says that um, if you execute these transactions, you get, uh, you get an outgoing receipt that that, that basically mints a billion near. Um, then the challenge can prove this is invalid by attaching a proof of like the state before the execution, like the, the relevant parts of the state before the execution. And then um, the transaction that ex or, or the receipt that executes, and then the resulting state and show that it doesn't match the, the receipt that was coming out. Um, yeah, so, so if, if there is a challenge, then, um, then we, then the, the next block is going to include the challenge and then like maybe slash the validator, re revert the blockchain state and so on. Oh, so we, 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 we do have the logic to revert the blockchain state. Uh, it's not implemented. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so we also have the validator info page, which is not migrated here. So I'll go back to the old UI. Um, and here, um, this, uh, what is going on here? 
Um, it's not showing anything. I guess this is a very small validator. Oh, this, this must be a chunk only producer. Um, there's, a, there's a page that is specifically for um, block producers. Let me try to see if I can find someone who actually has an open port. I guess they don't. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, one of our Ethernet instances. See if this one has a debug page. Does it not even work? Trying to see if I can find a validator so we can look at that page. Maybe in the mock net. Let's try that. Um, and I don't know where to find an instance where I have a validator. But um, if it is a block producer, this 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 table would basically show um, for each block that it's supposed to produce, which validator gave it votes and when. Um, and this is kind of a de debug page for that. Um, OK, I, th I think we also need to um, talk about the, the structure of a block header. I think that's what, what was mentioned in the onboarding topic. Um, so let's walk through what's in the block header. I'm going to close that. Um, so, so just look at the v3 block header. Um, so the block has the previous hash. Um, that's just the previous block hash. There's a signature of the block producer. Um, that's the block producer that signs the block after they produce it. And then there's the header inner, which is split into light and rest. Um, but these two together are the block header. So there's the height, which is the height that we talked about. Um, the epoch ID that this block is in. Um, and then the next epoch ID, which is just the next epoch ID. Like we calculate that for whatever reason. Um, and then we have a bunch of roots. So uh, this basically kind of mm, ensures that the block is produced based on this, the, the, the right um, the right assumptions. So like the state root would be um, a hash, the the root of the Merkle tree of the entire state of the blockchain. And then outcome proof that, that I'm not exactly sure what all these roots are. Um, there's a timestamp. And then there's the hash of the, uh, the next epochs block producers. So that just kind of verifies that everybody agrees on who the block producers should be in the next epoch. Um, for the rest, uh, a, a bunch of more roots. These are these are for the chunks to verify that the chunks we include are indeed the chunks that are going to be included in the block. Because um, we we include the chunk headers, but then there's the body of the chunks. So then, like we we just hash everything to make sure um, everything is what we include. Um, there's the challenges route. That's that's for the list of challenges. Um, and the actual list of challenges is in the block body. Um, this is just the header. Random value, this is for uh, the verifiable random function. Um, by the proposals, this is, this is um, if a block contains proposals, like um, proposals for uh, how how much stake the this particular validator should have in the next epoch or maybe two epochs after I'm not sure. Chunk mask is um 
just which chunks are included. So if a chunk is is missing, then it, that entry will be false. Gas price, total supply of near in the system, challenges result. I don't really know what that is. And then the last final block and last DS final block. The last final block would just be the um, the final block that we talked about. So the uh, the 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 last block in this chain that has two more blocks sitting on top of it that has consecutive heights. And then last DS final block is just a weaker finality no notion that that is just you have one block stacked on top that has consecutive height. The block ordinal is the the number of blocks that are in this chain. So if you skip the height, um, the ordinal is still m plus one. Um, and the previous height, which is the previous block height, because that might not be n minus one if you have a skip. Uh, epoch synced, I don't know what that is. Approvals, um, so this is the approvals that you've received in order to produce block, uh, produce this block. So, so it, like typically it would be a bunch of endorsements for the previous block. And it's encoded as a vector instead of a, a map because we know what the order of validators are for this epoch. So we just include a signature for each um, for each validator in that order. Uh, and if, if if a signature is missing, it would be none. Uh, the protocol version. Um, yeah, and then we can we can get the latest block header by just like sending an RPC, um, the block method, and then it it shows us everything. So so you see here the. Um, oh, this is not the block header. This is the this is the actual block. So um, it it includes the the chunks. So these are the chunk headers. Four chunks: one, two, three, four. And the the block header, um, the approvals, all of these signatures. One for each validator, um, and stuff. Um, the challenges route is just all these ones because we we don't we don't enable challenges yet. Um, yeah. Mm, any questions? Yeah, one question I have is uh, currently is it like if uh, if a if a chunk producer or a block producer produces a malicious block or chunk, the only way that their like their content will not be included in the chain is like people don't like other validators don't vote. Uh so i think there's several different cases so um if it's a block producer producing the in invalid block then it, it should be kind of obvious because everyone else is able to validate that um if a chunk producer produces an invalid chunk then if we go to phase two of sharding where not every validator tracks every shard then only the validators who track that shard would be able to know that the chunk is invalid unless it's some like very obvious issue like the chunk header is invalid um then everybody will know that but um, if it's the chunk contents that are invalid then only the the people tracking that shard would know that and assuming there are more than four shards then or if there are at least four shards then um the mechanism preventing that from continuing would be challenges. Because um, we would have more than two thirds of votes 
from the people who don't track that shark. I see. Mm. I see. There, there were some discussions a while back um, about whether we can do better than that because um, challenges is a bit is a bit heavy weight. Um, but um, the, I don't think there were concrete action items coming out of that. Like some some other ideas were like, if if we have some sort of proof that oh like one one more and one one kind of simple idea would just be not only would you require two thirds vote from all validators, you would require two thirds vote for uh, from each set of validators that tr track each shard. So you need two two thirds votes for every shard. Um, but then the problem is also that uh, you sacrifice availability because uh, what if there's one shard that just happens to not have two thirds vote? So currently there is no issue of like invalidating these like invalid chunks because because all validators track all shards. So like, yeah, they're, okay. Yeah, so for phase two, we would need to solve this issue somehow. Um, we need to figure out how to enable challenges. Got it. I see. Thank you. Oh, uh, one last question I have. Like, uh, what are the situations that would, um, like make the whole like network stop producing blocks or there is no situation that should that that should happen it certainly happens and uh there there are various different situations that we run into um like by design it's not supposed to do that uh but uh i think that the the latest one we had was something like uh there there was some invalid chunk going around because uh of a network upgrade and um and i think some validators thought it was valid and, and other validators thought it was invalid and um you know what i i, I can't re re really recall <laughs> what was going on but but there were there were several implementation issues um that just made the network stuck um there, there there's some validators who were supposed to produce blocks but they were behind and they were somehow not able to sync up to the to the most recent block um yeah, I think that, that that was one major reason. Got it. Um, and the network was so heavily forked that was um, like the fork was so long, there were more than hundreds of blocks, and our syncing algorithm just didn't work in that scenario. Oh, OK. Is that why we are like, we are trying to redo this, like not redo, but have a new state sync? or? Uh, no, state sync is separate from that. State sync is for uh, syncing the state, not mm -hmm. the blocks. Okay. Um, the block sync is is uh, is implemented with header sync and body sync. Mm. Header sync is to download the headers, and body sync is to download the block bodies. Mm. And so specifically, like one issue that we had last time was that because the forks were so long. Um, the, there was a gap in heights of more than 512. Mm -hmm. And when we do header sync, we only ask for the next 512 heights. Yeah. So that we, we, we don't get the next block. Oh. So we, fix that. we fix that by instead of asking for heights, we ask for ordinals. Mm. OK. I think that's how we fixed it. That I, I was the one fixing it, but I don't exactly remember which so solution we took. Anyway. Okay um thanks for the detail yeah thanks for attending thank you 
Thanks, Robin. That was great. Thanks. All right. See you guys later. See you.